are those lipomas normal or may it be a toxin buildup in your pets? However, I hear every day from pet parents, maybe just like yourself, that my pet has a lipoma. I took them to the vet. They said it's a normal finding, especially if maybe you have an older pet. And I want to know out of all of you joining today live, or if you're re-watching this later, have you been told this by your vet that those fatty lumps and bumps are just a normal part of the aging process? Well, here's the thing. I want to challenge that statement because there's a very big difference between normal versus common. And I'm here to tell you that lipomas, which we're going to be talking about today in this week's Coffee Talk with the Doc, are a very common finding. However, they are not normal. So if you're excited to learn more, maybe you have a pet that actually has a lipoma or you're worried about a lipoma, this coffee talk is exactly for you. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the founder and holistic veterinarian of The Natural Pet Doctor, and I'm on a mission to make sure that you, as the amazing pet parent that you are, have all the tools and knowledge to help your pets thrive naturally. And today we are talking about a very common issue with so many dogs. Some cats can actually get these too. And we're going to break down some myths and give you some practical tools and protocols that you can actually use to help your pets if you're battling lipomas. So I see you all. I know this is super common. I see it all the time. I work with so many patients that have lipomas. But first, we want to start with what is a lipoma? Because there are so many different types of lumps and bumps out there. And this is really important where we make sure first that this is a lipoma on your pet. So these are going to feel like little fatty, like soft uh, little lumps and bumps on the skin. They can get really big. Crazy fact. Back when I was working in the conventional clinic a couple years ago, I actually removed a lipoma that took up the entire treatment table from a golden retriever's abdomen. It took three of us doctors to do it. It probably weighed about 15 pounds, that poor dog. However, it was a benign tumor and just a bunch of fat. And that's what lipomas are. They're this accumulation of fat. And so when we, when we actually remove them, it's just a bunch of like a little solid ball of fat. Now, the question is, though, is that most of the time, it's a benign finding. What we mean by that is that it doesn't tend to spread. It doesn't go anywhere else. Most of the time, it doesn't bother your pet unless it's a 15-pound lipoma in the abdomen of your dog. Of course, that's not going to be feeling very comfortable. Um, they can get quite large. If they're in like the armpit area or the groin, it can inhibit movement. However, if you're feeling any lumps and bumps, one of the easy ways, it's not very costly at all, is and it's very easy to do, non-invasive, is to do what's called a fine needle aspirate or an FNA. That's where you go to the vet, you have them draw some a sample of the cells from the fluid with a the needle. They can actually look under the microscope. And what they would see with a lipoma is a bunch of fat cells. So we wouldn't see any other cancerous cells like mast cells um, or fibrosarcoma cells. Like those are tumors that we need to remove because they can affect the rest of the body. They can spread, they can metastasize. Most lipomas don't do that. There are very few types of lipomas that can, liposarcomas can be quite invasive, and there are some that can metastasize. However, whenever you feel a lump and bump, it can be really hard to tell what they are just by looking at them, but they tend to feel fatty. Have your vet aspirate. Make sure it's not that. But here's the thing. It's not a normal finding. And the reason I say that is because so many pets have lipomas and there's not anything else that's given to them to do. And it's actually common, but it's not normal. And the reason why a lot of these lipomas form is for a very important reason that's commonly missed. And if we miss underlying root causes or imbalances, what can happen over time is that things can progress and they can turn into other problems. So this is like the check engine light in your car, right? You don't wanna ignore it. You don't wanna put a sticky note on the top of it and keep on driving without investigating why. And one of the reasons that lipomas can form is that for one, a lot of overweight animals, so obesity, more fat, 
right? So obesity we know is not a healthy thing for animals or for people. And a lot of fat, or a lot of pets are actually getting overweight. So making sure you know how to body condition score your pet is really, really important. Getting your hands on them, not comparing them to the neighbor's dog, not comparing them to your friend's cat. Uh, we do want to body condition score them and get a true idea about, is my pet overweight? Asking your veterinarian, what is the ideal body condition score? Where does my pet lie? So that way we're not creating more inflammation in the body, putting extra stress on the joints. They move less, which can actually create more lipomas. And the reason why is that the lipomas, when we think about the body and how it should work when it's running optimal, when it's 100%, we can think about from a Chinese medicine perspective that we have energy running through our body and it should be flowing smoothly. It shouldn't be getting stuck anywhere. And I want you to think about it from a conventional standpoint too. We have our nervous system. We have our venous circulatory system. If something's not moving well, it can back up and then things start stagnating and it can form these masses. And what the body does with that, if we have any stagnation and things aren't flowing the way that it's supposed to, toxins can build up. And the body goes, I can't deal with this right now. And it walls it off. We get this accumulation of fat that can be actually filled with a lot of toxins also because of this toxic load the body can't process, and we end up with a lipoma. So this is where detoxification is really, really important. And a lot of these pets aren't able to process fats either. And then their lymphatic systems, which is also a huge area of the detox pathways and part of getting rid of the toxins and processing fats is not working well. And it turns into this vicious cycle and your pet ends up getting more and more. Those lipomas get bigger and bigger. And we don't want to overlook or miss this. Now, here's the thing. The detox is the part that helps the body work better, but we also have to look at, well, why were the toxins there in the first place, right? And we live in a toxic world. We can't escape it. I can't escape it. You can't escape it. We can do our best to become aware of internal, external toxins. So this is where once we know better, we can do better, right? Can I get an amen on a Friday morning, like a thumbs up for that, right? We're all on this path of learning. Hopefully you stay on that journey. You continue to learn because here's the thing. There are a lot of toxins out there. And once we know about them, we can do more to support our pets. We can do more to support ourselves. I see you, Sultan Light Farm. Thank you for that. Amen. And Lisa and Carol, I love you guys. You're fantastic. I see you, Jane, ham spam. Uh, so here's the thing. We don't need to be afraid of them. But I want you to also be able to assess your environment so you can look for these hidden toxins. So cleaning products, laundry detergent, Glade plugins, candles can be a source also, artificial fragrances. So there's a lot we can do internally in our home, right? We can control this environment a lot more than I can control that environment outside. Also, water can be a source of toxins. So using filtered water can be really helpful too. So what we're doing is we're trying to reduce the burden that our pets are exposed to. Food is a huge source, especially for feeding processed food diets. Uh, so things like kibble. Uh, now, there's a lot of great ways to improve the food. So if you do have to feed these types of diets for whatever reason it is, using superfood toppers. Um, and we have some great free guides at the naturalpetdoctor.com uh, that are free on how to optimize your and improve your pet's food. So definitely check that out if you haven't gotten that free guide. But this is also too where I want you to think about, okay, what are the things that I'm using on myself? Like this morning, I'm sitting at my computer, my Kiwi cat loves coming up on the desk, she starts licking my hand. And I'm like, hmm, if I wasn't using like clean, safe, like lotion, shampoos, like all the things for myself too, because we're part of their ecosystem. And she started licking my hand and she would have been grooming off toxins if I used a lot of like the conventional, like normal lotions that you can get in the supermarket. 
So you don't have to go crazy, but I always recommend starting with one thing and working your way forward to reduce those toxins. Because especially if your pet's experiencing these fatty tumors or lipomas, we have to reduce the burden because the body's working harder and it's storing those toxins in the fat. So this is also too, I love someone mentioned it, uh, how about heartworm medications, flea and tick products, especially. We have a lot of great blog posts, free YouTube videos on natural remedies for flea and tick products, and also repelling insects, uh, heartworm, those types of things. There's safe ways to use, especially heartworm preventatives, if you do li live in a high-risk area. Um, so definitely check out our blog posts on heartworm, um, because this is, once again, sometimes we need to use these things. But we can do things to protect our pets and we can use them in a way that minimizes the risk and adverse side effects. So looking at those, also to outside. So I talk a lot about my Finn, my German Shepherd. He died of a brain tumor. He had seizures because of the brain tumor. And we are exposed with where I live in Fort Collins, Colorado, to lots of toxins. They spray the heck out of everything. They were fogging us this summer like three times where they actually came through the neighborhoods to fog for mosquitoes, which is absolutely absurd. I don't know if they got the memo that mosquitoes don't stay in one place. They fly, but they didn't. I don't think they got that. And so here's the thing. I can't control what they're doing other than like moving, right? Thought about it. And then also the neighbors. I've never seen so many yellow flags and this town versus I used to live in Colorado Springs, none. And so if you are in a situation like I am, where especially in the summertime, everyone's just using herbicides like it's water on their lawns, you need to make sure that you're decreasing and supporting your pets, especially dogs who are going outside. We take our Tico cat outside if he grazes any of the grass. I am using detox supplements every single day for him. That is really important. So Every single person's environment and ecosystem will be different. So that's something where we can become aware of that, though, and then we can analyze our environment. And then what we can do is remove what we can. And if we know, like for me, example, during summertime, I need to up our detox protocols for all the cats, myself, my husband, because we're going to be exposed to more things. And so for supporting those pathways... They're nice and open. My liver's working well. My gut's working well. My microbiome's like healthy and happy. We can use herbs and fresh foods to reduce inflammation, help prevent degeneration, which is the first step to the body breaking down uh, by optimizing diet. We win. That's the key. You can win the battle even if you live in a toxic environment. But we have to be aware of the things and how they're all interconnected so we know how our pets, especially since we're talking about pets, are doing. Once you start doing that, we can stop the progression of lipomas. We can a lot of times shrink them. It may not be enough by itself, though. And that's what we're going to talk about. But I wanted to touch on an important system, the lymphatic system, because this is a key system in the detox pathways. It also helps with providing nutrients, cleansing the body, and it's a passive part of your pet's immune system. So this is where a lot of white blood cells are. They're going to fight infections. This is what consists of the lymphatic ducts, the lymph nodes, and then the vessels that work alongside the circulatory system to transport this lymphatic fluids. And it's when we get like backed up lymphatic system, things start breaking down real quick. Toxins will go back into the bloodstream. We can see all sorts of things like allergies, ear infections, hot spots, brain issues, behavior problems, right? That's a toxic burden potentially because that lymphatic system's not working well. Now here's the thing with the lymphatic system. It is passive. There are not muscles to contract down. It's not like, you know, it's not like your heart pumping that blood, getting it flowing, moving through the circulatory system. It is relying on movement. And this is one, a, and one reason of many why physical health is an important pillar of our five pillars that we talk about in our blueprint program, because through the movement and contraction of the muscles, we can get that passive lymphatic system moving so we don't get stagnation. 
Now, I want you to think about what does stagnation in the lymphatic system look like for a lot of people? If you've ever been on a plane ride, so not too long ago, we went on a 14-hour plane ride to New Zealand to go back to where my husband's from. I went to vet school there. Long freaking plane ride what happens? You're sitting most of the time. You're not moving around. And this is where you start getting lymphedema in your feet. Your feet get swollen. Your ankles get swollen. This is the idea of compression socks, right? So if you're not moving and you're getting fluid buildup, that's a problem with the lymphatic system not working. So getting our pets moving and activity and exercise and play are great ways to help Another great way, I love you, Nosley. Thank you for sharing the Blueprint program is awesome. Nosley is one of our amazing members. Uh, the other thing you can do too is massage. There's also a great tool called like with gua sha. I don't know if anyone uses gua sha tools for their face. Uh, that's lymphatic fluid movements. You're actually helping to move the lymphatic system. And massage, just think about petting your pets, like just a more like kind of deeper, gentle pet and moving along the lymphatic pathways, which are all over the body, can get that fluid moving at supporting the detox pathways. So these are great ways, right? So when you're thinking about, okay, I need to look at the deep, like what potential toxins are out there, looking inside the house, what can we address, what can we reduce, what can we remove? We're looking outside the house. What can we address? What can we remove? If we're knowing like, okay, it is the season for toxins. Okay, let's make sure that we're adding in certain types of supplements. We're getting our pets onto the best quality, less processed food that we can possibly do for both of our dogs and our cats. We can also use certain types of herbal, herbal medicine. We can use detoxification, which we're going to talk about in a protocol that we have using whole foods and glandulars to support that lymphatic system, the detox pathways, and help break down that fatty accumulation. That is what that lipoma is that is full of those toxins. So the body can just get rid of it. And I see you chick little studio. We just had a six pound lipoma removed from my golden's back leg. They can get massive. So here's the thing. There is a time and a place to remove them. I am not against removing lipomas, especially when they are inhibiting movement or causing like quality of life concern. And, you know, six pounds is a lot, especially on a back leg. The thing that happens though sometimes, and this would be something that I would recommend looking at is when we remove something, we tend to forget about why that thing was there in the first place. So we have to remember there was a reason, a root cause for that lipoma. And if all we do is remove it, we actually haven't fixed that stagnation area. We haven't improved the lymphatic system. We haven't addressed the toxicity issue or supporting those detox pathways. So then what happens is, is down the road, I have no idea when, because it'll vary for every single pet, depending on all those factors. Then what happens is that those lipomas keep coming back. And you're like, why do I, why is my dog so lumpy and bumpy? It's because of those reasons. So we have to go back. So removing it doesn't fix the issue. It can make it easier to the body. You know, we're removing a source of toxins, right? We're removing this stagnation in that one area, but there's the whole body that we have to address too. So that's really, really important that we, we go back to why and ask that question, why? Why is that thing there? How can I optimize these systems and how can I improve it? And that's done through those five pillars, really. This is going to be the physical health. It's going to be the immune health. I see someone, mama bear, the rabies vaccine. Toxin, right? Like there is a time and a place and we have to give them sometimes, but we can do things to support their immune system and detox them and help them to rebalance and make sure the body can get that out. We have gut health and nutrition. We have the emotional health because stress can directly create degeneration, microbiome issues, and then, of course, environmental health and detox. Those five simple pillars will guide you and help you by to assess your environment and to see, okay, I've got that optimized. What's the next one? Do I need to do anything? What do I need to tweak and adjust? So just following those five pillars, we have a free masterclass on it that you can check out too, um, to how to find the root cause of disease. Check it out. Watch it. And then if you need more guidance and help, join our Blueprint program, schedule a call, see if it's a good fit. But here's the thing. Let's talk about 
what are some specific things you can do, right? Those are great general principles. You're probably like, Dr. Katie, what can I specifically do? And I want to highlight some supplements. There's a link in the description, by the way, for full script that actually details it out. You don't have to purchase them through there if you want to. Fantastic. But there's a great company that I use. So this is for people in the States. Um, so there's other tools that we're going to talk about for people that are outside the U.S. So don't worry. But I really love the company Standard Process. And the reason why is they are all about regenerative farming. So replenishing the soils, crop rotation, using organic. And then they're using whole foods, ingredients, and also glandulars. So we can actually take the gland of the organ system we're trying to support, and we could feed that using the principles of like treats like. And so standard process makes it easy for us because we can add these into our pet's protocol if you, they are dealing with a lipoma. And this protocol works for both dogs and cats because the principles are the same and the root cause comes down to we have stagnation. <clears throat> we need to open up those pathways. We need to support the lymphatic system. We need to support detox pathways. We need to make sure we're feeding an optimal food, right? Sound like a broken record, but here's the thing. It is commonly missed. That's why I keep repeating it because I see it every day. I talk to lots of pet parents and it's commonly missed. So I don't want you to miss it, okay? Here's what the standard process protocol is. Once again, click on the link. If you are watching on Instagram, go to the link in the bio. If you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, there is a link in the description that you can click directly to take you to the full script protocol. We want to support fat breakdown. We got this accumulation of fat. It is hard to break down. This is why they're frustrating. You'll hear people like, you can't get rid of those. Here's the thing, patience and perseverance and time and the right supplements and supporting the right systems. And you can make progress. I promise you it can work. I've seen it work. So choline, choline is an amazing supplement that actually works as like a fat dissolver. And what it will do, and you might be thinking, wait, isn't choline in like egg yolks and like eggs, right? Yes, it is. But we want concentrated choline. And so this is a fat dissolver. And so what it does is it acts like a detergent. So think about like your, your dishwasher soap, right? You mix it up, like you have like fats and oils, like the grease from cooking. And you're like, it's so hard to get rid of, right? But you mix it in with a detergent and it breaks it all up and the fat dissolves, right? This is what choline does to the body that's having a hard time breaking down fats. That is the lipoma. So when we add choline at the right dosages, we use it for the long, long enough period of time. This takes a while, this protocol. Patience and perseverance, right? It took a while for it to build up, just FYI. <clears throat> the lipoma did not happen overnight. So we have to shift our mindset from the conventional fixing things, symptom care, to realizing we are actually healing the body. So choline, and there's dosages at that full script. So please go there to check out dosages. I'm not going to go through those because they vary for the size of the pet. And it's all listed there. I got you covered. We need to break down the fat. And then what we do, because it takes a while to get the body to start breaking down the fat. What's the system? I just want to see if you guys are listening. What is the system? where we need to support so the fat gets cleared. Anyone, anyone, you can just write in the comments if you're watching this. What system would we be thinking about? So, okay, yes, detox, but yes, Lisa, you got it. The lymphatic system, because if the lymphatic system's not working and we're breaking down all this fat accumulation, where is it going to go? It's just going to get recirculated and stored, right? You guys are on it this morning. And so this is where, and also too, 100% gallbladder. So this is where we can use herbs and specific supplements to support these systems so it gets cleared out of the body. The bile is a huge part of this, coming from the gallbladder, going out to the stool, and then being you know, removed through the stool, through the gut. And so we need to be thinking about, though, as we're breaking this down, first place it's going to go, lymphatic system. And so we can use a product called Thymex from Standard Process. Once again, for everyone just joining who didn't hear me the first time, it's all on full script. Go to the link in the bio and the link in the description. You can see all the dosages. This is using the glandular thymus. The thymus is a huge important part of the lymphatic system, supporting the immune system. And when we give that, 
we support lymphatic drainage. So this is where we use a we use a dosage of your choline. We start getting that detergent properties. We break down the fat. And then what happens is, is we add in Thymex to support more of the lymphatic drainage. And then we need to combine this where we start with a lower dose because, right, the choline needs time to work. And then once we get to literally about six weeks time, remember patience, perseverance, it's time here that we're working on the body, nice and gentle. We don't want detox reactions. Then what happens is, is that we bump up the Thymex dosage and we help the body expel it. But there's some other systems too we need to support, right? Because it's not just the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system will help clean it and drain that excess fat. And then we support those detox pathways. So there is another standard process product called Livtin. It is a human medi herb combining different herbs. So globe artichoke using dandelion root, milk thistle seed, blue pleurum, and fringe tree. These are very specific for bioflow. So everyone who said gallbladder, you are 100% correct. So bioflow, bile production, bind the fats, get it out, and enhancing detoxification, opening up those pathways. Now, if you're like, I can't access these products, if you're in Canada, you can access Adored Beast. You could always use their liver tonic for this part of the process. That would be fine to use. Other nice fresh food options that you can use to help with this, dandelion is a great one. So you can actually use dandelion root and grate some of the root on there. You can also get, you can use milk thistle by itself, right? We can also use, you know, the dandelion root supplement. We can also use in terms of helping with detoxification. Uh, so mentioned your adored beast, using these products by themselves at the appropriate dosage too. Oh, and fresh food. You can use beets. Beets are amazing for thinning bile and helping to get that bile flow, supporting gallbladder health. Beta food is a product from Standard Process that I use all the time to help with like gallbladder mucoceles and thinning, thinning that bile so it doesn't get stagnant and back up and just create like this toxic sludge and backup in the system um, that then can lead to the thing of your lipomas forming, right? So you want to look at some of these things and we have to go with all these different steps and thinking about how does the body work? How is it interconnected? Because if we only open one part of the pathway, but we're not getting that lymphatic drainage and the movement and getting the exercise right to make that lymphatic system work, you're going to get stuck. It's not going to work as well. But if we can focus us on all these different phases and all the interconnections, that's where you see the results. So if you're sitting here and 100% apex uh, Apex per holistic pause care would choline help with high fat levels and blood from testing a hundred percent. And so will omega threes. Um, so, which is like so weird, right? Uh, but definitely use chol choline is very, very helpful for that. Um, and yes, Diane adored beast liver tonic, but once again, you can use, so essentially, uh, there's Dr. Mercola's or Bark and Worcester's detox support. Uh, there's so many. You can use individual single products, too. If you can't get all this, we can add in fresh foods that are going to support uh, those detox pathways, too. Uh, because looking at things like your broccoli sprouts are going to support phase one, phase two detox. We can add beetroots. We can add steamed broccoli. And you don't need a ton of it. And I know a lot of people are worried about the amounts and I'm going to overdose. I promise you're not going to overdose. If you're using something that's stimulating the gallbladder and the bile, what may happen if we're using too high of a dose and that pet is not ready and the same thing happens for you is you might see loose stool. So then back down the dosage, get the stool back to normal, and then stay at that tolerated dose, and then see if you can work your way up. That's what you would see, and it makes sense, because too much bile, bile dumping into the gut will create diarrhea, create loose stool. That's what it's there for. We're dumping a bunch of like fat and detergents in there, and then it just it gets expelled. So think about, remember, why are we using it? What are we using it for? How does it work? And it helps you if you see like a side effect, we have to think about, wow, okay, it doesn't mean that that wasn't the right supplement for my pet. We have to look at, okay, maybe their tolerated dose is lower. Keep that in mind as you're using those, but follow that protocol. There's also soybean lecithin that is in that protocol too. It's a supplement, a complement 
to choline. And so what it does is it has a little bit, what can happen with lipomas is that they can have a calcium buildup in them. And that can make it harder to break down. So that soybean lecithin actually adds a little bit of phosphorus to amplify that detergent activity to break down the fats and break down that calcium deposits. And then the rest of the protocol through your choline, the thymex, and then your liver support, your libtin com complex or whatever you use to help keep those pathways open, support your, your gallbladder, support that bile production. And then remember, this can take eight to 12 months. You start noticing things get softer, right? We're using detergent activity through these supplements, through these herbs on that fat. And so it gets softer and then you start seeing it shrink. We may not get 100% resolution, but here's the thing. Remember, we're working on why it happened in the first place so it can help prevent things from occurring in the future. And so this is really, really important. So if you have a lipoma, I know uh, Mama Bear, you mentioned, still has lipoma. We're not doing other things. Make sure you're supporting, like try some of these things if you haven't tried it to see maybe we can actually get that lipoma down or even smaller or even disappear if we haven't touched on some of those other pillars. But two, if we get it really small and it stays there, we're looking for and monitoring our other lumps and bumps appearing. We're monitoring blood work, right? So we're staying on top of things. And a little bit of fat that's stuck there that doesn't go away 100%, great, okay? We are helping the rest of the body. We're strengthening, strengthening it. We're supporting it. Really, really easy um, in terms of just thinking in these five pillars and making sure we're ticking off those boxes. Now, I also shared from an amazing human being and colleague, Rita Hogan has an easy lipoma salve recipe. So I shared that on the full script also. So you'll see that too. Uh, there's a bunch of herbs that you can actually put together. I recommend, of course, organic. I shared Mountain Rose Herbs link for you. That's where I get a lot of my products from. And you can combine them all. If you can't access these, but you can get frankincense essential oil, I love it. It's super safe. Make sure that you're getting high quality brands. Make sure you watch our other videos on how to keep your pets safe and use appropriate brands and appropriate dosages and essential oils are 100% safe for both dogs and cats when they're used appropriately. Frankincense though is one of the safest. And this is where you can actually apply a drop of it topically to that lipoma one to two times a day and it can help. It complements. It's a really great anti-cancer essential oil supporting the immune system. It supports strong, healthy, emotional health too. It smells great. It's not super strong. So pets don't freak out when you use it. If you're concerned, you can always dilute it with a carrier oil. Um, and there's a great recipe there from Rita Hogan. So make sure you check it out. And if you have other questions, I'm actually doing a discount through the end of the month for a better gut health program, 20% off. You can use code healthy pet. This program takes you through those root causes we were talking about. Lipoma is a symptom. It's the end stage of these imbalances. And so whether you have gut health issues or allergy issues or something else going on, we need to figure out what those root causes are. And there's a lot of great testing and diagnostics you can do that we didn't have time to touch on here. We talked a lot about it in my other videos, so you can always check those out. Or you can have a self-paced online program that gives you pretty much the frameworks and what I use to help heal the gut, support the immune system, support emotional health and detox pathways to help your pets feel their best and help you feel really confident you're on the right path for them. So make sure you check that out. It's good until 930. And if you have, uh, you know, questions about the protocols or things like that, just drop it in the comments um, and I will do my best to get to them. Um, and so this is, there's a lot of other great alternative options too that you can use. I found this protocol really, really helpful because we're working on those different pathways. We're working on breaking down the fats, opening up the detox pathways. We're working on the lymphatic system. These are all key areas alongside the rest of those five pillars, physical health, gut health, nutrition, immune health, emotional health, and environmental health. So make sure you check out all our free resources at the naturalpetdoctor.com. I'd love to hear what you found the most helpful. So if you could drop a comment down below, and then I would love to hear what other topics you would like to hear more about. It helps us with our weekly coffee talk with the doc uh, topics and picking the ones that are going to help you the most. 
So I hope you guys found this helpful. I appreciate everyone for taking time out of this beautiful morning to join me live or watch the replay. Don't worry, this is all up on our YouTube channel and under our Coffee Talks with the Doc. Um, so you can re-watch this. Please share with other pet parents that may need help uh, with their lipomas, with their pet's health care in general, because this is all free information on here. All right, everyone, take care. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. I will see you all next week for our next Coffee Talk with the Doc. Take care.